starting to believe this was all just a master plan so you didn't have to eat old soup anymore. You could eat new soup. Actually, Portuguese new, old new, soup new is soup for you. not Come back the when worst. You're... If it's creamy, it's it's really nice. <laughs> well, you can you can cream your. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Linux Edencast Weekly. I'm Vince Stowe, and here to help us the actual and beautiful, beautiful downtown Athens, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux on all ends, as always, joined every week by our team, the Canadian Snowflake, one Jordan Sfang. We're trying to get him under some UV light for amusement and laughter. And forever alone edition, Pedro, very rare, with this banana tuna fish pizza. Yes. That, that 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 was my dinner because you're a damn monster <laughs> and together with you at home in chat room joining us live helping us form a nut tuna and banana flavored cocaine voltron before we get started we like to see what's going on horrible horrible decision in each other's life organs and pedro um we we need that boot update man that's what the internet's been screaming about that well uh the boots are on their way they'll arrive on monday i think they, the the DHL sent me a text. It's like, yeah, we'll be there on Monday. They're like, all right, mm. fine, whatever. So yeah, on Monday there shall be boots, hopefully. Are you Don't trying to communicate that you're over it? You're like, they'll get here. <laughs> I'm not over it. I want the goddamn boots. I want them <laughs> real bad. But yeah, I um, the reason I'm forever alone right now is uh because I went to drop Nori off at the train uh earlier today. Because she's going on a field trip with her um, university. Oh, that's fantastic. She gets to Portugal. go on a... Damn, I was going to set you up for a joke, but fuck you. All right. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're going there to draw, like, uh, all the monuments and everything else. Uh, so, Both yeah. Both of them. It, it's Lisbon. There's there's a few. It's like the capital that they have to overcompensate for. Because, you know, it's Portugal. It's the rest of the country. Really not that good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I figured, you know what? Let's just go all the rest of the way into town and get myself Raspberry Pi 4, the 4 gigabytes of RAM version, because, yeah, if you're going to get one of these, this is the one you get. And I got a chance to test it earlier, and yes, it does do um, 3840 by 2160 at like 15 FPS, to be generous. <laughs> Quit bragging. George, what's new with you, baby? <laughs> Uh-huh. No, I've just been busy at work. Um no, nothing really exciting, just trying to get shit done. And then I come home and I sleep. That, that's my life. It's very sad. You I'm, need I'm, a I'm, hug. I'm I'm pretty sure John I'm pretty sure John Lennon wrote like a really depressing song about it. Yeah. Life of Tiles. Oh Nothing man. Like that. <laughs> That'd be good really over here to LGC actual uh been playing around with I'm going crazy trying to figure out how to do the network thing and i'm trying to pour you know a gallon yes into a shot glass full of a brain trying to figure out the networking stuff i suck at net are you good at either of you any good at networking stuff we're talking yeah. like manage switching i can bs my way through it okay yes yeah, see i i can i can stack exchange my way through this i know that yes <laughs> I, 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 I took enough here. i took enough cisco courses in college that i have a decent grasp on it <laughs> See, this is. I have ICDN one. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, I, I'm just here. I'm engaging. Who's who? I'm going to bug more in the upcoming future. <laughs> empty. Empty. Probably. Hey, I empty. Pretty much. Yeah. We love you. Um, outside of that, not a whole lot. We figured out that uh, our website is now running on HTTPS version three. It's one of the first sites. Didn't expect that from our podunk little show, but hey, cloud players like you're in it now. And I'm like, what? Can I use it? Oh, I did learn this. The only way you can test it is with Chrome Canary. I was like, okay, I'll just, I, Chrome Canary, that's, I'll get another Chrome browser only available for Windows. I'm like, what? How? Yeah. That, did you have did, to did, build did, it from source to get it on Linux? I didn't toy with it because they're like, hey man, you can access it with curl too. And I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't care. As long as nothing's broken, I'll <laughs> deal with it. Like we deal with a horse each and yeah. every week. Yeah, the horse isn't moving at gigabit speeds lately. I think it's gone to back down to like 10 base T. It's the Steam Lights. Got dead. Come on, browser. You can do it. Yay. All right. There it is. <laughs> Top Steam releases. Store. Let's do it. August 2019, people. It's thing. And there's some Linux that I'm 100%. Uh, anything here that really blew your minds? I saw that 
Dicey Dungeons. That was good. I was very mm-hmm. happy to see that. And uh, what else was in here? Uh, Ion Fury. Ooh, Ion Fury was in here. So yeah. Did we get anything else? I know Metal Wolf XD is not a Linux game because I remember no, it's seeing not, it, that. It, it looked really fun. It looks fun. like it should be. It looks like yeah. it should be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but un- unfortunately, no. I mean, yeah, not not the biggest fan of uh, promoting Ion Fury these days. But it's nice to see that there are some Linux representations in these um, in these sorts of articles that Steam is pumping out just to suck as much developer dick as possible to stem the bleeding of people accepting Epic money. It's a better love so. story than old Steam. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's something but... we need to talk about. I think everybody experienced it, man. Uh, as a recording earlier today for like what, maybe thirty minutes. Steam was down, but the outage only affected Earth. But yes, <laughs> every single server was like, that... "Oh, five oh three offline." Really? <laughs> wasn't that? I, the, I, the, it worried the... me a little bit, simply because it's like, wait, the whole thing can die. You know, yeah. I. I <laughs> Since it's been, I've, I've seen parts of Steam go tits up. I've just never seen, you know, hundred percent nopage. I mean, yeah. I, I, I was t- I was taking a nap through that entire thing. So yeah, I, we, I we brought it up it in the was... previous super service. And was like, watch Storm was down. And I was like, yeah, have a good nap. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's what I recommend: when Steam goes down, just take a nap. It'll be better when you wake up. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Science. <laughs> Clyde Beta. Yeah, the, Clyde there's, Beta. there's a new one. <laughs> That's the it, it stops the Steam new library from eating as much dick as it does? Mm, question mark? Kind of a big question mark. The only thing that's <laughs> Linux specific on this is the GPU crashes and overlay corruptions with games that were using Vulkan ASIC compute with like, you know, mm-hmm. Doom 2016 and stuff like that. But they said, hey man, you know, we're working on remote play, playing around with Steam input, and they've done a couple of things with the new library. Uh, but... I tried it. This is how, how are you guys dealing with the beta? Because this, every time I see an update that mentions, hey man, maybe we've unfucked something, I bounce over, then I go, what? okay, if I, if I click between store and library like six times, sometimes it comes back up. Then it doesn't. And then something else will get, and it's like, nope. I need it's, to been, that it's been relatively solid for me. I think I'm getting to the point where like my initial rage towards something that I'm used to changing has subsided, and I'm just in the adjustment period right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like it, 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 it's fine as it stands. All, all the old shit I looked at, at on the old library page is still there. I just gotta change where I click. I still think it's a bit too shoddy because going back to the standard client, and I'm like, I, this is me too. If you've seen anything, I very Spartan. It's like it's functional. I like functional. This works. It's like no, you need more whoosh and wish and forty percent CPU spikes that I don't notice with a red rubber. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> But yeah, man, what what do you say to that, Pedro? Because I've seen you, uh, I think, or Theron, and a couple of people, like, man, this big, you, it's like, have you ever scrolled in Chrome? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't spike up to 40%, and it's worse in Firefox when you say have uh, Google Docs open. Mm. It, it, it'll spike up to the 40s easily. Uh, but yeah, the I kept the beta because it's still working. It's still as jank as it was um uh, at the beginning, so yeah, it, and I kind of like the new layout. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the ability to infinitely scroll and look at like the community posts. So if there's like a bug that I ran into and I start scrolling down and I see a thread with the name of that bug, I'm like, okay, cool, that I'm running into that. Nice. <laughs> I again, I like being able to group games by you know things I haven't played, um, games mm-hmm. with online multiplayer. I'm like, that's a filter, that's handy to dig out, but that's a depressing filter too. Because, like, there are a lot of games in our libraries that should have online multiplayer that don't. Yeah, well, that's just, mm-hmm. that, that, that's just how peeps roll, man. Um, <laughs> but our, our, our libraries can be expanded through the magic that is Proton. Indeed. Yes. Um, they got a little itty-bitty Proton update. Uh, this is 4.11.6. Um, You're not yeah, joking. They, they, yeah, they, all right. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it, was, it was so itty-bitty. I, I, I saw I, that. I, I got zoom in. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So they, they, they've updated uh, to the latest version of DXVK. We're going to be talking about that in the news section. Apparently, there's some inconsistent reports of GTAV working um, just via vanilla Proton. I know I know that Strider has had that fixed under Lutris for a while. But for the people who want the press play and go experience that Proton is supposed mm-hmm. to offer, um, th- this is probably a worthwhile did. fix. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But again, pe some people are saying that it's launching. Some people are saying it's not. So maybe there's some additional issues that need to get sorted out. But it looks like it's moving in the right direction. Yeah, I'm but definitely going to roll back to what we said earlier about any type of online game. Like, get you're just rolling the dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the problem here isn't even the game itself, because, yeah, the game client is still the same. It's that stupid launcher that Rockstar has tacked on to the game that they changed, and it broke not just the Proton compatibility, it broke the game for a bunch of people on Windows, too. Well, it's Rockstar, so, so they're sitting back going, how much <laughs> of this bullshit will people blow up with? We make our own launcher like everyone else, and no one can use it. Yeah. <laughs> and as it turns out, GTA 5 is a very profitable game for them. So the moment that they launched that new uh, launcher and it blew back in their faces, things started moving very quickly to try and fix it. Mm. So, yeah, chances are it'll be back working with Proton in no time because, yeah, they're going to fix it on Windows, too. <laughs> well, they're going to have a tough time fixing it on linux if it's running arch and oh my god Scott. so this 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 came up on uh, our linux underscore gaming uh and i thought it was interesting apparently people have been scraping the repo.steampower.com and found a little folder called arch and what's inside <laughs> what's in the box what's in the box uh, it's the um, it's the aco mixa and the uh fc and kernel forks for optimum performance for your uh, proton games so Spool up the rampant speculation drive, yep. fam. We're gonna hit plaid, right? <laughs> um, odd, odd, odds are, odds are, Valve just put this up because you know there are some people probably testing internally. Um, using Arch as a moving target is actually probably a little better in terms of testing some of the more bleeding edge features. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe we're maybe we're actually going to be starting to see some official Valve sanctioned support for Arch Linux. It would be nice to see it for some other distributions as well. Maybe they're just rolling out Arch because when something goes wrong, they will generate the most noise. Um, I have a different take. Ooh, I think they're using it to test F Sync because if you want something that's going to be rolling the latest and greatest kernel without any effort on your part, Arch is a very good place to start. Not just the kernel, but everything else around it, too. It's the bleeding edge, right? Right. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, and pl plus, you know, having the Mesa with the ACO compiler prepackaged with all the... the well, well, again, this is, this is all stuff we're going to talk about in the news nope, section. Nope. You just cause... confirmed Arch is the new distribution yeah, I'll, for I'm Steam. Yeah. I, I, put that, I put that down as, like, my rundown joke, and I'm like, I made that exact joke last week. I gotta, I gotta change it. I gotta be a little more original <laughs> than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know, yeah, if, it, if, if you want to play... Oh, go on. No, go it's... On. Uh, it, it actually does make sense if you look at the popularity of, like, Manjaro. Uh, it's doing very well, and there are a lot of people It's like, ooh, really up-to-date packages and it's reasonable enough to install and reasonable enough to keep working uh so and since valve is clearly you know they, they don't really care about steam os anymore it it makes sense that they would use something that's current and up-to-date to test things well i mean if you if you want to play games on your cell phone they they have a thing for that too don't Dude. they? well that they do uh and it's uh they've really optimized for remote play or at least that's what they're aiming for because they found a few games where the developers actually took the time to implement the uh, steam input api properly are you so desperate and... to play a game that you're willing to go through this boom? <laughs> well you, you know what may, 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 maybe maybe you're playing something like stardew valley or nino kuni and then you realize man i gotta take a dump but i don't want to stop playing well so it, it's I'm just... interesting that you bring up stardew valley because they do state that they had to you know it's difficult to get something that's typically played with a keyboard um to squish down to a mobile mm -hmm. interface, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, Sardew Valley is one of the ones that they bring up as a fine example of implementing the Steam, uh, Steam Input AB API properly, because yes, they have managed to create the little UI icons that indicate exactly what you need to, uh, or where you need to press on screen to do a certain thing. And they're incentivizing uh, other developers doing that, and they have basically put together a hundred uh, configurations, default configurations for the Steam remote uh, input for a hundred games. That's significant. And with more developers uh, putting Steam input into their games, 
and allowing those games to be played anywhere just like jordan said you need to take a poop you grab your phone away you go uh now we just need more games on linux proper i guess to ask you like the <laughs> true true jordan um the the true true about the poo poo yeah are you, are you grabbing your mobile phone because it feels like if you do that you want that in there because you have your switch but you also want to check reddit I usually as a personal point, I, I will make the decision before I squat down to take a dump whether I want to play a game or browse Reddit. Usually, usually if I'm already playing the game, it's going to be the game. Mm -hmm. And if I'm just like derping around cooking, well, doesn't or, that like, add like a little bit of a hard mode, dude? That would imply that you're already playing on your mobile yeah, device. Well, I, I already I already play. Well, I, I guess the question was posed for Switch, so I was just assuming you're talking about that, but mm -hmm. um. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I personally don't actually use the uh, Steam Remote Play all that much. Um, Hundred percent, I tried it. It launched, and I'm like, that's, I mean, yeah, it's yeah, neat. Hundred percent, it, 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 it but, worked. Yeah, yeah, I play, I, pl I played a bit of uh, Tides of Numenera on my tablet. It, d it definitely did the thing. But I have the Switch for playing video games on the toilet. But if you don't have a Switch, this is a reasonable solution. Indeed, all right. Uh, and as long as you have fast enough internet, it'll work. Yes, Half Life Two works yes. with fast internet. It does, tell, and tell it's worked devs. with slow internet for the past 15 years, but uh, yeah, the fine folks at uh, Valve have decided, you know what, that game, what we never released the ending of, needs a bit of an update, <laughs> and admittedly, most of it seems to be geared towards the VR experience, uh, like uh, fixed Steam VR running um, when entering the settings menu. Uh, they've also... Fixed NPCs not blinking. I'm not joking. That's something that Valve wrote. All I'm hearing is that it update. has taken four years to eradicate the code base of Weeping Angels. <laughs> Pretty much. Science. <laughs> I kind of want someone to go into the game and find the Weeping Angel Easter egg that Valve put in there. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. I didn't. I didn't never. I didn't know they blinked. In the first place, I, this is not something they I, did, they I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> I, I, I'm sure this stemmed from a complaint of like, I can't play Half-Life 2 anymore. The NPCs are staring at me. They're judging me. They know my name. Either that or like Gaben sat down to like, he's like, I haven't fucked around with this in a minute. And he's like, why are they blinking? Like, oh, crap, he noticed. All right, we need to go fix this. <laughs> yeah, no, as, as it turns out, all the devs who worked on Half-Life 2 have their had their eyelids removed so they Clock can't blink anyways. Away, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah i saw ass. this as i was going to bed yesterday it's like oh you gotta be fucking kidding me shout outs <laughs> have you ever thought about you know traveling to a distant planet maybe um taking a protein pill no i i, I always thought about it would be really sick if i just shot a bunch of cars into space oh you, you're right baby elon on mars <laughs> the star man has finally reached its goal and listen all right, first off, this thing's like 59 cents, but fuck it, we're going to talk about it. Um, Serious you, games, you guys. SRS you games. you might know, man. Elon like sent his Tesla into space. You know, it's PR stunt, whatever, SpaceX, but still, great one. In orbit around... So you effectively get to fly, like, hover Tesla and just blow things up. When, when is the Tesla update that enables the laser guns going to get pushed out? Man. Yes. <laughs> This is dumb. Because we know what's in there, Elon. Come on. Come on. Why not? <laughs> uh, Fire phasers. Beep, 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 SRS beep. games. What does it take to run? It's a, it's, it's a bit of, is this meme? It, it, it requires <laughs> not DXVK A gig to of run. RAM and a DirectX 10 compatible graphics card on Linux. That's doable. I think we can swing that, man. Yeah. <laughs> There's no multiplayer on that, though, so you can't have, like, car wars on Mars. Oh, that'd be great, man. That one in the um, electric Porsche could go at it. Yeah, it'd be great, and they, you know the Tesla when, like break out on the new Oh and then, and then like a giant Prius is the final boss. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Okay, little misfortune. Uh, little miss, little miss, little miss fortune. Yeah, um, can't be fortune wrong. Can't be conductors. Can't be can't, can't be, be fortune wrong. But just Indeed. go there and scream that to a fortune reader, man, and see how long until the cops show up. <laughs> They should well. They really should have seen that coming. Anyways, um, yeah. So, Little Misfortune. It's a adventure game. Um, so this this one came into the notes after the next one, which gets a little weird. Uh, so 
Yeah, so let, let's break it down. So this is a heavily narrative focused game. Uh, you walk around a bunch. You make a couple of binary you choices. Man, that oh man, you mm-hmm. eat, you scream. You eat sandwiches. This is basically my life. I just eat sandwiches and scream. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you, you make some binary choices here and there. Uh, a lot of the reviews are basically saying, like, this has very strong visual presentation. It has very strong writing. But the gameplay is kind of lackluster, and that's where it kind of falls apart. Um, but like the next one. Okay, um, we're going across the river sticks. It just got my attention. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like, oh it, she it, dead. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 look, it looks like it's, oh, it's all cute and shit. Look, it's Baphomet. Everyone loves Baphomet. Um... <laughs> But yeah, it 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 look it looks sufficiently dark, but with 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 the veneer of cute, and I think I think that's where Man, it's getting a lot of like the forgiveness like Bruce from. Willis seeing dead people. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. But yeah, like much much like the next one though, there's a little bit too much focus on the visual presentation, and that's where a lot of the user reviews tend to fall off. Is like, yeah, it's it's nice looking, it's nice, it's well acted, it's well written, but I'm, I'm, there's not really much for I'm you to do. Taking this, bring this back, demos. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I mean, Steam refunds basically <laughs> makes every game a demo, right? Yeah, until, um, <laughs> until they cut your ass off because you're abusing. It's 19.99 if you want to play around with it. Uh, it looks incredibly well done. And hey, man, anything in, it's got death in it. I'm down with. 100%. Death, indeed. Yeah. It's you, with 16 by nine in mind. You do um, need the um, 5500 Broadwell GT2 and seven gigs. Please be yeah. aware that this game is designed with 69 in mind. Giggity. Um, Suck it four by okay, three. Okay, so you get letter boxes if you tried running, tried running it in four by three. I don't trust you. letters. <laughs> All right. Well, th- okay. I I I got I got to try very very hard to not just go into a full racist Japanese impression. Jenny Leclou, Detective Vu. Uh, I, detective I so- Vu. Detect Detective Vu. Not Vu. 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 Detective view. Yeah, um, yeah. It reminds <laughs> this one reminds me quite a bit of Oxenfree from like the uh, art style and whatnot. Um, and uh, the reviews even call that one out too. Um, but again, much like the last game, complaints boil down to it's very, it's very pretty looking. It's good. It's well written. It's well acted. But you know, there's not much of a game here. And I don't, I don't. Know, there, there are definitely people who like uh, narrative focused games, and this is something targeted hey, this has at got them. Got more death in it, man. I'm going to have to buy both of them. <laughs> yeah, if you, especially if you love nerds. Um, but yeah, if if you if you really do like uh, narrative focused games, this is probably something that will be right up your alley. What's what's it selling for these days? It's twenty bucks. Twenty five bucks. Twenty five Rem- Canadian. Oh, hello. Check this out. Remote play on phone. Remote play on tablet. Remote mm-hmm. play on TV. Hmm. Remote mm-hmm. play. <laughs> Interesting. It's 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 almost as if Steam has integrated their experience so that it just shows up everywhere. It sounds like a horrible uh, idea. Indeed. <laughs> Quite depraved. Quite depraved indeed. However, this game that's called depraved looks well it looks like someone just took a bunch of stock assets I was going and to say, said, looks like we're Micro- going to microsoft called and they want dust 6.2 back well, like... yeah uh it's zero, like zero they ID took a bunch of the one. uh stock assets and they decided let's make a city builder uh out of these assets and they did and to their credit uh it actually was uh very well received at first uh, apparently, Did ever they change, since like, the game, this minute thing that wouldn't even bother any of us listening live or anything, but it just they they replaced no, all the guns the, with walkie talkies. The thing oh, was, uh, it, it came it. out of early access, and they didn't finish it. Uh, there's like no end game, and <laughs> yeah, it's uh, according to the reviews, it was um, it was all right as like Pedro, the, the concept are you they of a game. Really went the distance for this one? No, no, they didn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they really weren't going for speed and that kind of shows because apparently it devolves into waiting out the clock to get more people to come into your city and to get more money in so you can build more stuff really quickly that's the basic core uh gameplay loop is just that very very quickly so yeah people weren't too happy about that so now the reviews are done to mixed <laughs> Yeah, so so what you're saying is they packed it up and then they rolled it out, rawhide? <laughs> Pretty know, much. <laughs> I mean, we've seen that happen time and time again. Um, you know, it's a good game. How many times have we uh, threw a game to the Cherquisition? I mean, we were honestly able to say, if this was an early access, this would be awesome. Yeah. 
because you can see where they were right. going with that yeah. and what else they could add to it and then that there's nothing mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe if it was a little more depraved it would be a little uh better well received <laughs> Like, so uh, yeah, like, keep your like, like twenty bucks on this one. Rain of the <laughs> yeah, like, old ones. Yeah, like an HP Lovecraft mo novel. Uh, Stygian, Rain of the Old Ones. Uh, embrace the madness. They say it's a Lovecraftian RPG where you go around and you kill cultists and you research old ones and then you go insane and it's a grip roar and fun old time. Um, yeah. So without having played it, I can't really comment too much on the story or anything like that. Um, but it's using might and magic style combat. You wander around. You do the standard Call of Cthulhu shit. Uh, one, yeah. Uh, head, head, one thing that kind of stuck out is they listed fourteen ten as a uh, as a system requirement. That's a that's a weird one. Usually you see like twelve oh four, fourteen oh four. Sometimes the elusive ten ten twelve, the Ubuntu ten twelve that got mm -hmm. released that one time. Um, but then uh, but then this one calls out a uh, mid. Uh, LTS distribution, which I found a that, little bit weird. That, that could have been like some weird and like accidental Linux. It's like who who at home has Linux installed on the things? I was like, I got yeah, the, oh, I installed yeah. Ubuntu Dual fourteen yeah, ten. I, I don't at think some I wiped point. that drive. I'll bring it in. <laughs> yeah, so, so, something like that. Uh, but but I, I actually do like the art style. I I like me some uh, Lovecraft, uh, some Lovecraftian horror. So it might be worth a look. It is it is a little pricey at uh, twenty five bucks, but you know. We we we. St I, th I think one thing that's occurred over Steam is that we it's really caused us to devalue PC games, or either that or shit on console is way overvalued. I'm not sure. You got to you got to give shit console... on console is really expensive. Yes, you have to give them credit. I mean, video games have been sixty pounds since I was a child. Mm -hmm. That you know they they've had that on lock, but fortunately and now they, they just tack on season passes. And microtransactions. And why do you, why, why do you hate freedom, Pedro? Come on. <laughs> Buy more. Consume. Freedom isn't free. You gotta, you gotta pay out cash. Coming up next, if you are an AMD GPU user, no, if you're, just you're gonna be very excited. If you're just if you're just Lisa Sue, you're gonna be very happy with the next segment. Party. Since we don't really like shilling for ourselves, Says I have you this listening. really um, completely, you know, off the rails idea. How about we shill for ourselves? No, Pedro, I, I'm starting to believe this was all just a master plan so you didn't have to eat old soup anymore. You could eat new soup. Actually, Portuguese new, old new, soup new is soup for you. not Come back the worst. You're... If it's creamy, it's it's really nice. <laughs> well, you can you can cream yourself by heading on over to <laughs> Patreon.com/slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, you get you get you get the smooth velvety texture that is supporting us, uh, giving giving us some money hey, every dude, week. Heads up, pressing down when I had OBS activated didn't do anything, and that's a good thing. So totally might have just did that. Um, <laughs> might might have been porn, yeah. But uh, becoming a Patreon gets you some cool stuff like uh, Discord access. Us. You get access to the uh, pre pre super chosen, which is an extra hour of Linux gaming content Dude, that we have a out. video right. of now. Sweet oh my god! Yeah, we just unlocked that. We beta tested it tonight for executive producers. And you know, uh, anybody who's the Death Note and above, you get access to our Discord and you get the audio. You can come in live, rap with us an hour before the show, talk about you know things that might might not be going on. Yeah, but you could actually talk. Video component. It, yes, yep. you can. That is terrifying. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Indeed. Um, but yeah, we we got some lovely content behind there, including Ven showing off his creepy basement, which I guess isn't his basement anymore. It's, it's just his not, creepy man. den. My, my basement is <laughs> back to being creepy and very loud because I got that edge router down there that is turbo fan. Indeed. Um, but we got we got we got some new goals coming up, don't we? Because we 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 play games a couple of punish, days a week thanks to the Patreon. Bad bad touch, man, dude. Yeah, <laughs> if 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 you want to get us above a certain level, we got to play some Werfenstein, some of the new blood. We've been threatening to do that. Uh, we've always had a fun time. We got a long tradition of doing that, like setting up play dates, starting with Trine. We went through Trine one, Trine two, and begrudgingly, actually, Trine three. yeah, Trine three. We. Bullshitted our way through trying to though. It was hilarious, man. With Pedro trying no, tr 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 three us. was just like calculated fromage to see how we could just pretty much. <laughs> yeah, right. We, 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 we did we did uh, Left for Dead. We did Portal. When trying four comes out, and if Left for Dead three or Portal three ever come out, we're gonna have to do those. Um, well, those are evolve games. This <laughs> this is definitely gonna this is gonna harken back to what Pedro and I did with Meet the Freemans. We went through 
With everyone's help rotating in and out using Synergy, we beat Half-Life 2 on hard. Oh, we, we did it We did it with uh, Serious Sam 3 as well. Yeah, you rocked and rolled through Serious Sam. So our newest uh, spicy level of bullshit, we're going to burn a heretic purchase. Oh, <gasps> Yeah, we're going to do Wolfenstein Youngbloods <laughs> in stereo. Now, the beautiful thing about this is we only get to burn one heretic purchase, and we can bring in people from the audience, but you don't need to own the game. With a buddy pass, anybody can roll in with us. But nice. <laughs> we're going to do that on hard mode. It's going to be brilliant. We'll hit that. Lock and load, ladies and gentlemen. What, 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 what do we need to get to in order to hit that goal, though? Uh, it's on there. You can go look for yourself. Mm. No. Yeah. I can't I can't read. Because <laughs> one that's... $300. One that's <laughs> much further down the road and infinitely more safe is the thing I've been threatening to do for like two years is Skyrim job because we have the super low latency with Twitch and bringing the community in to vote and tell me to do horrible things and me having to do that, because I've never beaten Skyrim. And yeah, so, buckle up. That buckle up, buckle sounds up. like an incredibly bad idea, but we'll do it anyway. Good. We, um, we, we, got, we got some other avenues of support as well. You can buy some of some sanctioned official LGC merch, not the one you get from Teddy on the street corner. That LGC stands for something completely different. Store.withersgamecast.com. <laughs> buy some stickers. Buy some t-shirts. If you're a Francophile, you can broadcast to the word. World, if you want someone to use you, you can wear the Lonely Tap Penguin shirt. Uh, it's, it's very sad. I, I want someone to use me. Man, what would you do if you were like walking down the street and you saw somebody selling like bootleg LGC merch outside of Hug Them? I think I just hug them, like just yeah, straight up. Yeah, like, it's like I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I would actually genuinely be curious, like what was the chain of events that resulted in you having to sell bootleg LGC merch? Hundred percent. That was my first thought. Then my practical reptilian brain kicked in, and it was like then I would get very still and start looking for them. I'm like, all right, this is a setup. Something's going down here. I was yeah. drunk for a reason. Who and are you? Who hires come you? Come in the cloud and he's like, ah. <laughs> I'm like, no, this is how it ends. All right. Spe spe speak speaking of how getting your head chopped off, Amazon. We have an Amazon store. If you're curious how we, what kind of hardware we use to uh, make this show, uh, we we got a we got a place where you can go and see what we use and purchase it, and we get a little bit of a kickback. We also got uh, Amazon wish lists. Uh, I got one. Petra has one. The studio has one. If you want to buy some stuff, you can get up on uh, Frank's fuck wall. Oh, See that damn glorious orange piece of uh, that cardboard. That didn't last long. That's a good deal, everyone. If you can catch it, the A fifty one hundred. Yeah, the renewed. It's like mm -hmm. three hundred bucks, dude. Mm. Highly yeah, suggest uh, but... you can pick on us, make comments about like, hey man, I don't like what you're getting. Maybe it's a bad idea. We will take that feedback, hundred yeah. percent, man. I'm yes. still waiting on someone to buy me that butter infuser, though. One day. Yep. One day. Everybody's help. This is uh, <laughs> completely community funded, man. Community run. It's kind of brilliant. And uh, let's keep doing it. It's brilliant. Indeed. Oh, yeah. Speaking mm -hmm. of doing it, Mesa Project's doing it. They got 19.2 out. It's available. You can buy it. Well, you don't have to buy it because it's open source. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the latest Mesa, which has support for the Navi Radeon cards, is out. Um, so, as is usual, Mesa tradition, the point zero release is considered unstable if you want, you know, fewer breaks you should maybe wait to the 19.2.1 which is what a lot of the distributions like ubuntu and fedora are going to wait for we're pushing that out if you want to preview that you got to find like a ppa or a copper repo or an aur blah 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 steam has one if you're using arch you should maybe consider using <laughs> that one um yeah uh so aco is probably going to wait till mesa 19.3 so it's probably a good time to give them it's probably good to give them some time to merge the other performance changes that weren't approved yet um, and there'd be lots of Proton fixes here because that's what Valve is pumping money into. Um, Jay, baby, I'm going to ask you a question since you're what, the newest member to the AMD family with your, uh, what was it, 480? I, I, I got an 8 gig 580. 580. All right. Same difference. It's same card. Uh, Pretty much. How's the Mesa Life treat you? Because I know before that, well, you did have experience with a laptop, but like on the desktop is, how's it, is it comparable with NVIDIA? All I know is NVIDIA because I'm a shill for Team Green. Well, so here, here's the thing is my TV is not the greatest for gaming. So, um, cause of, cause of that upscaler, uh, but it, it runs fine. Like games launch, they play at reasonable frame rates. Um, I've, I've experimented briefly with running shit at UHD, but that, that does not work too well on the 580, mm. even with the eight gigajoules. Uh, but at 1080, it runs perfectly fine. Um, 
it, it's it's a, it is a very nice out of the box experience, um, especially because Mesa has or uh, Mesa DRI three is enabled by default under Fedora, unlike in Ubuntu. In Fedora, so, yes, <laughs> yeah. So you can uh, you can just uh, install things, make sure AMD GPU is loaded, and you're on your way. Right on. Pretty nice. Tune in on Tuesday to find out more what it takes to run it on the Ubuntu side. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, the new version of Mesa, the stable version, brings in initial support for the Navi 14s. That's your uh, 5700 and your 5700 XT. Yep. Uh, they Basically, it recognizes... Uh, if you plug them into the PCIe port, it goes, oh, that's this card. And it feeds it the uh, relevant AMD GPU bits, but it's it's still not 100% there, but it, it's a start. It's good. Uh, and yeah, if you're using 19.2 uh, and the 5.3 kernel, you may even be able to play some video games on it. Hmm? Maybe. With the 5700 <laughs> XT, yeah. Bonus yeah, exciting <laughs> times, especially with uh, we we talked about this in the Steam segment. DXVK 1.4 is released. Um, it implements the latest version of DirectX 11, which is 11.4. Uh, so that's what the latest version that's available in Windows 10. It it does not implement a bunch of features like um, tiled resources, conservation, rasterization, and rasterizer ordered views. Although they're fairly uncommon options because they're so new. So once games start using them, they're going to implement it. Um, yeah, the, uh, they got some uh, resource mapping improvements. Basically, just lots of fixes for, like, Souls games. Every every DXVK update, there's probably a couple fixes for Souls games, because that's what most people who are using DXVK are playing, apparently? I don't know. Uh, well, the vocal, to vocal be fair, ones, man. I mean, you got to think it's the type of people who play Souls games, so you know they're going to be shouty. Indeed. Just like this guy. Well, I was actually going to bring up GTA V because with the whole uh, thing about the uh, new uh, launcher that Rockstar introduced, it's, yeah, uh, apparently DixVix is actually doing something to uh, improve on that. And part of it stems from uh, Wine's inability to accelerate direct 2D because it was never really necessary uh, until this point. Uh, so, yeah... They say that the DXGI runtime interface will need a wine update. So chances are you will uh, we will see a proton rebase on I don't know probably wine four sixteen or four seventeen. Yeah, like next week because I know the latest update with wine. Man, they, they were uh, playing around with mono stuff, and I'm like, this is what my Batman's needs, and I can play my Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Batman. I'm, I'm, I'm sexy Batman, and talking yeah, about yeah, uh, not an Android, please, nay. No, and this one is uh, well, it's called Lollyhop, and it's uh, D nine Vix. It's the companion to Dix Vix. And it lets you run all those games that still use the X9 that ch chances are you bought back in the day and you'd very much like to play with reasonable performance. Nope, I, on I Steam. only play OpenGL games, Pedro. How dare you accuse me of. Well, I, you should I, be I, playing I, Vulcan games because that's to, where to, it is. To, I mean, to, to the Wine Project's credit, the OpenGL implementation for DX9 is pretty solid for most games. There's just a couple it is. that. Uh... It's, it's just the performance that it's not really there. It'll do everything, it's just. It's very heavy on the processor, but uh, putting DirectX 9 to the Vulkan layer uh, apparently helps a great deal. And uh, I mentioned GTA 5 earlier with XVIX, and here we have GTA 4 actually getting some better support. And they've um, one of the DXXO uh, fixes actually comes from the developer of DXVK. Uh, which was implemented constant bound uh, constant bounds checking uh, fixes vertex explosions in The Witcher Two. Mm. So, so yeah. you can actually play that under <laughs> Linux now. Yeah, you can actually play that now. You know, something I was curious about Witcher Two. I saw some people mention that, and it's like, uh, I, it was a neon port, and I'd like to stick with native games, but Curiosity Proton has very much enabled Curiosity. It's like, okay, let's try to run this with the uh, latest Proton. It ain't dick. Didn't happen. There are some that uh, still do that. Uh, I think uh, Bioshock I'm... Infinite. That yeah. that's one of the ones that doesn't Haven't played yet that one work in with Proton to this day, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's oh. one of the games I tried because it's like, oh yeah, let's try that with Proton. Yeah. But on the other side, you also have um, 
Saints Row 2, which... Um, that did run, though, didn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it did run very poorly, but you enable Proton, it's like, oh, this game is actually playable now. Hmm. One, one, one <laughs> game that did get an update is kind of the red-headed stepchild of the Serious Sam franchise. Serious Sam 2, which was a radical departure, actually has some uh, fixes here, so... Serious Sam yep. 2, believe it or not, did have a native Linux port, but it was one of the janky Iculus ones that he kind of had a name complete. You? <laughs> how, how, no. how dare I call out janky Iculus ports for being janky Iculus ports? Listen, you child, it wasn't janky when it was released. It might be it janky because backwards compatibility is janky on Linux. It's not Iculus's fault. Let's go back into our time machine and see if that's true. Then I we was can go there. Do, do not quote the old magic to me. Child. <laughs> Listen, I, I just want to hang out with Jesus again. That's really it. To the time machine. All right. Uh, she, I'm not even going to try that. Whatever. This one. Chiaki, I'm guessing, uh, is a little bit of an open source project that's available on GitHub. And what it lets you do is, well, it lets you play. Witchcraft, dude. That's all I'm. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> it lets you uh, basically do the PS4 remote thing on Linux. Uh, it is, yeah, a completely free and open source re-implementation of the PS4 remote client. And what it does is exactly what the proprietary version does, in theory. It would let you just start up your own PS4 at home and then remote from the PS4 to wherever you are, similar to how Steam Remote does it. Uh, and there are some- It doesn't take much QT OpenGL. Uh, pipe no. Down. Uh, it it really easy. doesn't, and it's just an H.264 decoder that needs to receive a stream from your console, so you shouldn't need much. Yeah. But yeah, the one of the uh, things they have implemented right now is congestion control, H.264 error concealment. Uh, there are uh, there's touchpad support on the um, DualShock Four. It's not completely implemented yet. You can send like the tap, but the actual touchpad. Um, like swipe of the finger or double finger swipe or something like that. Any of the gestures, those are not working yet. Uh, the rumble is working, so you get your vibrating controller and you can configure the key bindings, so that's good. <laughs> it's a, it's in a relatively workable state. Um, apparently, um, it, it does ship in an app image, which is pretty handy. It's nice it's, to see yeah. that open source <laughs> That's are, very good to see. Yeah. yeah, are adopting something that doesn't require you to build shit from source. You can just execute it. That, um, but I, after it, looking at the requirements for that, I'd probably give that a curiosity. Like, yeah, it'd be easy. To yeah, yeah. Like, uh, QT OpenGL uh, would be the only thing I don't think it would have currently. Yeah. So. Like, it, it, it it's pretty lean when it comes to, to the requirements, but yeah, uh, if you're if you want 1080p for this, it's only supported on the PlayStation 4 Pro, and I'm not sure if it's good 1080 or if it's crappy 1080, but that remains to be seen. Um, but no, it's it's good it's good to see that projects like this exist. Uh, if you can't if we if we can't have a PlayStation 4 emulator, at the very least, we can you know play the games from our, the comfort of our Linux computer. You you can finally play Fallout. And all those other games that are ended up on the... Uh, what did you end up buying, Mike? Uh, dude bought a PS4 to play one game. Play dude. Fallout 4, yeah. Fallout 4, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now it works very well with Proton, so... That's the good principle I can get behind. Open Jam. <laughs> Open Jam. It's that time of year again. Red Hat hates Diabetes Linux gaming, time? but they're still oh, going to okay. help... Uh... Help uh, fund some Linux game development. Yeah, um, it's happening. It's actually it actually started already. It's going from the twenty seventh to the thirtieth. So if you're watching the recorded version of it, it's already womp over. Womp. Too fucking bad. But <laughs> if you're listening to it now and you can pump out a game in you know two days, uh, you might be able to uh, you might be able to get an entry in. Do you uh, think maybe be... some sort of brick simulation? Possibly, if if someone wants to introduce that to the contest, could be. Um, you got to build it with. Uh, you got to at least make the source code available. They give you bonus points if you use open source tools. They give you a nice big list of them as well. Um, yeah, and th yeah, that's what what I really liked in the like the introduction post that they made for this jam. It's like, here's a wiki page. Go there, click on it. It's like, oh. That's a bunch of open source engines, open source uh, middleware, open source like audio stuff, open source graphics layers, open source everything. It's like, th th oh. thank, thank you, Bubba Gump. Are you gonna <laughs> tell me more about shrimp? Um, but but yeah, uh, it, it's uh, there's no theme. You can just make a game and it will be judged, like most creative efforts. And 
the 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 first pr the first prize is satisfaction that you won the open game jam okay that, we're a little late it. on this we definitely want to give this a mention put it in your calendar for next year you know if you're watching live see if you can shard one out real quick but i think maybe we should make for next year x sweetie to replace x bill <laughs> it needs an update we'll do it in vulcan and it, it, it just pukes money at you. No, just man. Gaming's makes... trying to take over the um, gaming industry with um, Steam, and your job as uh, the valiant Tim Sweeney is to stop him at every turn. You got to pay <laughs> off uh, developers to make. It... There's a game in there. Is all I'm saying. Indeed. <laughs> you, you, you know. You know where there isn't a game though wah, on the Atari VCS. Wah. This comes from the <laughs> register. You can find all this nonsense after the fact in our show notes on our web zone check the link in the description time to check in again on the atari retro console dear god this actually got worse pro tip when you're removed as a reddit moderator you may want to review your life choices you know if i as a reddit moderator of a couple of big ass subs smart words uh just being one don't ever uh We've taken a lot of static about talking about this what is it i've never heard of it it's the linux powered uh Oh yeah, to electric boogaloo that they're using the Atari name to make a desktop console that's going to sell two hundred plus dollars. It's a stupid fucking idea. Always has been. Well, I do have to say this without gloating. Where's your flying spaghetti monster now? This thing <laughs> is just eating all the poo. I gotta say, man, what do you guys feel about? Oh, let's roll down with this. It's missed every single deadline. Hasn't provided any updates for months. People are like, hey. What about the guy who was like working on it with the company? They're like, uh, smoke bomb. He started <laughs> another company and he's doing another open source console. And yes. The only man <laughs> on the team with actual experience with building game consoles is now the co-founder of another startup. I mean, well, hey, and what, what was great yeah. is when, when, when they asked, like, is he still attached to this project? You know, lots of people run multiple projects and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The, dodge, the dodge. <laughs> That's what I'm saying about this, man. Maybe, they, hey, don't worry. Maybe they'll, next week they'll release a fresh 3D render. Indeed. Yeah. The, the, or another, op, uh, you know, um, empty plastic shell. Now, outside <laughs> of me, naturally, my resting state is bitter and jaded, but I try not to let that affect everyone else. This. You fail. This is round two. Um, Back in the early aughts, with my hipster naming there, we had this thing called the Phantom Console that was Linux powered. Vaporware too. I've been through this before. I <laughs> smelt this from not day one, but like day one and a half. I'm like this bullshit. So jaded, maybe a little bit. Yeah, and it's not looking good for these folks. They've just been so evasive. They missed all their deadlines. I, they don't have a product here. And ironically, we were so much harsher on the smock, but they produce something. They, there's a thing that you can hold in your hands and play games at like 15 frames a second, but you you can hold it. It's, we it's, were it's real. It's credit. material. There is a prototype right. out there. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. They made a functioning product and we're like, credit where credit's due. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They powered through it. It took them six years and they... Straight up does some motion. I'm like, oh, this is our yes, prototype. And no, originally, that's HDMI cable running into a display. No, it's not. Look the other way. Yeah, and uh, originally they called it the Steam Boy. So, yes. <laughs> that, that, and, that has nothing yeah, to do with anything aside from branding. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Well, well it did one Steam I guess it's like, only stop. fitting. it's only fitting that we should now have a new Whipping Boy. Even if it's whipping. just using the Atari name. <laughs> and that whipping boy is OBS Studio 24.0. Um, there's also <gasps> been, uh, you know, a couple of hunt fixes for this. Uh, I am currently not running that fresh build of 24 that I was on Wednesday because it was jacking up my AV sync a little bit. And I didn't feel like redoing everything, but I built a portable version anyway. So I just rolled back to this. This does introduce dynamic bitrate. Could be useful if you have slightly unreliable internet connections. And we're not talking about Wi-Fi. Quit trying to stream on Wi-Fi. You're wasting everyone else's time, including your own. Quit wasting your own time. One thing I noticed uh, that might be good for Jordan, myself, and Pedro is we're having to do the Mesa workaround for the alphaless textures on Rocket League and other games. I know Jordan was playing one a couple of weeks back. That was uh, Jack Sky up. Derelicts. Right. That was fixed. That's good because one of the things they were saying, hey, man, we've improved. Uh, well, there's just a gang of fixes for um, GLX composite capturing. That's great. Uh, 
more odd things you might not hear from other people. Uh, all of our black magic hardware works. Our deck link output works. Let me rephrase that. Our de deck link 4K works. The other one just eats poo when I activate that, but I didn't expect that one to work anyway. OBS WebSockets. They're working with a Linux browser, so we can still use the tablets for switching. And um, if you do keep track of the Open Broadcaster's blog, they even mentioned a little Vulcan coming up in the future. Yes. <laughs> kind of neat. That, that, that could be really, really nice. Or it could be really, really jank. Because we well, be like anyone who's now. used... Anyone who's used OBS... Uh, I've used it. At any point. Yeah. <laughs> You've probably tried to remove an element from a scene and OBS just comes crashing down. Nope. That's something that's still there. It's hard to do nowadays, but you can do it easily. I mean, I mean so, 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 Pedro, are, are you saying that new features implemented in a le long-standing software project may introduce some instability? Mm-mm. Especially one that completely changes the base uh, graphics layer. What yes. So Jordan, <laughs> Jordan, what he's implying is such a simplistic code base, like the one um, OBS is working off, such a small program. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, no. it's like, it's like three of segments. Peg, it's the simplest thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it. it's uh, a thing. The, Let's keep rocking. Speaking, speaking of OBS, way. Ven, you, you did a thing. I made a thing, man. I made penguins rain out of the sky. Uh, John. I like doing little help things, man. People are like, I'm curious. How do I set up like the Streamlabs? We're using it for chat and uh, stream alerts. So... Just walked everyone through it. You know, it's easy peasy lemon chainsaw. Debian Ubuntu, you can figure it out. You can translate from that. You know, everyone's smart enough to do that. And it's just uh, setting up the Linux browser plugin. We'll just, come on, guys, put that in there. You know, you shouldn't have to download that as a plugin. Adding the browser source and just setting up your chat or alerts. Then you can be like, oh, my God, John, you're so cute. Until somebody, like, donates a dollar more than John, then... Uh I, I I do I do like in that in that picture you have the little you have a little cleave shown. It's oh, nice touch. <laughs> man, I, I, I was straight up seventies. I was driving back from the station today, and it was like warm in Turbo Jetta. So like, as soon as I sat down, even though an underground garage, I like did, undid two buttons. And when I was walking to the grocery, I was like, Joe, man, it's like staying alive, dude. It was like <laughs> too hot for Twitch, dude. <laughs> I stopped outside and was like, you're not being very decent, young man. <laughs> fix myself up. Venstone, <laughs> very concerned. Then I spun decency. around and moonwalked my happy ass right in there. <laughs> anyway, you can find that at linuxgamecast.com. A lot of OBS stuff. I'm going to be doing one for um, something I recently did. If you want to play with the bleeding edge experimental stuff and you're new, maybe to Linux and don't use an app image, don't use a flat pack, don't use a snack, snack of OBS, a snap of None of those. Don't do that. That's wrong. It's bad. You will have problems. Trust me. This is one thing I do know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> if, so, if, if you snack on OBS. There we go. I'll finish this sentence. And when, you can just pull it from Git, install it, and you can build it. You don't even have to install it. It'll be a nice little standalone in your home directory that you can experiment with. And if you don't like it, you just use one built in to your system. So, Pedro, you got that hot, sexy Raspberry Pi, and you're going to make it do bad and naughty things. Well, I did, actually, uh, earlier today. It's like the first thing is like, oh, yeah, we're going to be talking about Laka in the show, so might as well give that a try. And I did, and it does work. Uh, the fine, fine folks uh, behind Laka have uh, put out the Raspberry Pi 4 image, and it does work out of the box. All you need is something you can just DD the image to the... Um, SD card, or if you're using something like Etcher, that'll do it. Uh, they actually recommend that you use Etcher. Uh, and yes, it works. Uh, it doesn't give you, like, uh, w one of the things I noticed is it doesn't give you the option to change the resolution of the monitor. It basically just goes, ooh, that's a UHD monitor. You're getting UHD. It's like, yeah, but the performance is crap. Don't care. Don't get an option to change that. Well, I know of a certain file that I can change. Oh my um, god, is that I crazy change. taxi? That is crazy. And yes, taxi. Uh, the Dreamcast. Apparently, it's playable uh, too. Yeah, the Dreamcast version of Crazy Taxi is absolutely playable. As are all of the uh, PSP right. uh, Ooh, games that I have. Moment. We got to take a moment. No. 
That's a sexy case, all right. That, uh, yeah, it, 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 that's that's yeah. pretty impressive. <laughs> we, we got really sexy at sixteen ninety nine. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get one of those. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, that's, I wonder that's if a it's very one of those ones where you have to like apply all the layers because they had. A, I I remember when I was working at Fedora, they gave us a bunch of pie cases, and a couple of them you had to like layer one, layer two, layer three. I bought exactly four, one pie case for the original pie, and I put it on, and I was like, yeah, that's only gonna work ever for this one. I never bought another one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, so 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 this art this article is from uh, hothardware.com too and it's it's actually a review of Laka 23 on the raspberry pi uh which they're, they're they're saying that it's pretty good if you just want to set up a little emulation box and not give nintendo or sega or sony uh money for their little cute itty bitty consoles that come with their usb controllers that look like the old super which nintendo are basically and... just pies inside but more they're, limited they're, yeah indeed so <laughs> that that is that is definitely a thing yeah, one of uh, the things that they introduced with the new version is also they have a Vulcan only image. If mm -hmm. you have an NVIDIA system on uh, an X64 base, obviously, uh, you do uh, you can just install Laka and it'll give you a completely Vulcan experience out of the box. So with the, uh, do they have it for like the Jetson Nano or what? No, 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 no. This yeah. is for uh, x86-64. Oh, pff, no. If you want to no, use we, that. We need that air. <laughs> I, I really I really do think that Nvidia is missing out by not let, not by not putting out a low cost like one of these boards to fuck around with because I think there would be some really cool embedded projects that could come out of it. Well, yeah. the ninety nine dollar compute board that Nvidia has is like really because I was I was genuinely genuinely upset when the Pi four four gigs just disappeared from the internet. It's like you know what, Rawr, I'm just gonna buy the jetson and i talk myself out of it but i kind of still want one man just like play with it see what we we'll make it do but yeah pe pe periodically i see those like uh development enterprise arm systems like i want one of those because you they have they have pci slots you could put stuff in them <laughs> yeah. and make them do things uh, we're all secretly just um tweaking our nipples and waiting for risk five mm, yeah, we really yeah I, I saw that uh micro atx motherboard it's like uh, I wanna, I wanna play with it, but it's so goddamn expensive. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. So uh, if if you're if you're a Patreon, uh, you can actually submit show suggestions to us. And empty did that. Um, and lo and behold, someone has gotten Doom Three running pretty well on the Pi Four. Um, yep. It's not it's not mind blowing performance, but it is definitely playable. It's a little, it's a little shaky at times, but that's what what do you expect for a sub hundred dollar computer? I'm going to be real um, with you. We talked about this a little bit on the Wednesdays, yeah. and uh, they're going to walk you through running it. But hundred percent, my whatever rig I had at the time. I think this is doing a better job than it was, and I, it was definitely. I don't even know if I had a flat panel monitor when Doom Three yeah. came out. <laughs> Indeed, one 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 thing I am kind of curious though is like, could uh, how how much Mesa optimization and how much engine optimization could be required to squeeze to just make it run more stably? Like maybe hold like a steady forty five fifty frames a second because that would be really cool. That would be a really that would be a really telling show of the um of the gaming capabilities of the Pi Four. But, um, yeah, and yeah. what the dude says in the video is like, yeah, the processor, it's absolutely there. It could actually run Doom 3 without an issue. The bottleneck that they're hitting is the GPU. Apparently, the Pi 4 GPU is still not that great, which kind of well, explains why I was getting like 15 FPS. <laughs> it's 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 really good for multimedia decode because it was it was even the the original GPU was made for a uh, for like a set top box. Mm -hmm. It wasn't yeah the so it, it, yeah it, it, it's effectively trying to run um, run games on like oh, what was it the um, Philips CDI right? It's not it's not really designed for running games. You can technically yeah. and hell <laughs> you you can squeeze some decent performance out of Doom three. Um, That's something you definitely want to test on the Pi 4 is because uh, I know when it did release, maybe they've gotten um, hardware decoding working with VLC at this point. Mm, yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Even uh, if you load up like just base Raspbian on it, uh, it'll even install the H264FI extension for Chromium uh, because it can't play whatever YouTube is trying to push it at 1080p60 right. in that particular format. It needs to turn it into H264. And then it can play it just fine. VP9. So, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, the GPU is very much a limiting factor here. And you can see that in the video for Doom 3 because it's like, oh, the CPU is doing 25% and the FERPs are down to like 30. Huh. 
Yeah. <laughs> you got to think, though. I mean, genuinely 10 years from now, we'll be playing... We can already play Rocket League in mobile, but like Tomb Raider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On a, a 20 pound, like what? A credit card size like that thin? Yeah. You're like, yeah, you know, just hook a Laser 6 connection to the video via AR. The network's just fine. Mm. Yeah, like almost zero latency. <laughs> It'll be brilliant. Okay, we got a game coming up. Co coming up next, my nose is a little running. I, I, I got a bit of a little sniffles. running or a lot of running? It's a lot. It's it's just too much cocaine, man. I got I got the Sniffleheims. We are the nuns of the Chairquisition, introducing you to the Chairquisition, where the accused must survive trial by Fedora, Solus, and De Boyne. and then and only then the question be asked. This is fun. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Niflheim by a lot of games done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about twenty bucks. What is it? Your avatar is a brave warrior who has fallen in battle, but instead of finding well-deserved peace in Asgard, his soul is trapped in the harsh world of Niflheim. Survive this hostile world, ransack the neighboring lands, explore dangerous dungeons, and find your way to Valhalla deliverance. Um, we do a little thing where we talk about how this game runs before we get into how fun can it is. Can we do so a little then, dance? We can make a little love if you want. <laughs> make a little love. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, over here in uh, Steambox land on the Debian 10.1 with a Threadripper 1920X, 32 gigajoules of RAM, um, nine, wait, not nine, what do I got, a 2060 nine, NVIDIA, nine, nine. nine 2060. Nine. <laughs> not a super, not a duper, just a regular old vanilla one. No issues. Didn't run into anything. I'm running XFC desktop, uh, Compton, and all that fun stuff. At 60, uh, 60 FERPs, 2160 UHD, 4K, what the kids call it. It claims it's running at a solid 60, but it's got just little micro hurricane and jerks and yeah. same thing at 1080p, man. It's still there. You notice it if you look for it. Graphics wise, it's solid. No glitches to report. Nothing's like spazzing out for me. And the controls, happy to report. Fired up the wireless excellent controller. Everything was there. Worked out of the box. Every and bonus soda. Everything was mapped logically. So pretty much the only good thing i'm going to say about this game is it gets four chairs four makes with it working yeah on fedora 30 64 bit with the i7 6700k with the uh specter mitigations turned on and the gtx 1080 ti it indeed doodly launches graphics wise or performance wise it holds uh, 68 uhd sort of kind of yeah it's not it's not great uh you gotta cut vsync off and you yeah, actually did you did you have to enable full screen when you started it up yes yep yeah, because it, it launches in a window. Um, the graphics, they're hand-drawn. The animations look a little chunky, as do a bunch of the characters, but they're fine. No no real issues there. And control-wise, DualShock 4 worked out of the box, but no DualShock prompts, though, which is... I, I, I'm, I'm resigned to this fate, but I'll give it four chairs regardless. Yeah, that's weird that you weren't getting DualShock prompts, because look at the game footage I uh, got. The... Weird. yeah. The Niflheim for me, it does launch. Uh, it does say it's holding 60 at 2160, but yeah, the frame time is all over the place. There's a lot of uh, frame jitter. Uh, the animations, they look all right. They're a bit stilted and a bit, you know, like string puppetry happening, uh, especially for combat, but I guess they do the gerb. What's the uh, same thing like Salt and Sanctuary, man? It, no, no, see, Salt and Sanctuary actually made some very good use of the limited animations with some of the weapons. Well, what about the um, like turn-based card game where you dungeons? That one. It looks like it's the kind oh, of um, um, art artifact. No. <laughs> no, yes. Slate Aspire. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Darkest Dungeons. Controls. Uh, I do have to dig in a chair for controls because while you can rebind keys... The game forgets those rebinds whenever you restart it, so that's no good. There are at least four different buttons that I counted that you can use to interact with things, and mm -hmm. one of them is up on the Choices. left analog stick. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm not joking. Uh, the game uses the analog stick to move the selection cursor in the menus, and that's completely, it's like that screwed with my brain because I'm hitting the uh, like the D pad, and Instead, the game is making me drop the weapons or unequip stuff. It's like, stop! No, stop! Bah, bah means stop. Yeah. And, yeah, the to say that the controls feel floaty would be a gross understatement, so I'll give it three. 
Okay, I do have a question though for everyone at home, Pedro. On what operating system were you playing this on? Oh yes, I was playing this on Solus uh, with the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080. You're welcome. I'm sticking it for you, audience. Buzz, buzz. <laughs> All right. Well, technical stuff's out of the way. Ooh. Did you have fun with it, then? Subjective part. Get ready for the hater raid. Because crafting, question mark. He put crafting in my Viking simulator. Vikings only crafted one thing, people, and that one thing is pain. Then there's this motherfucker that I'm playing as. He spends his day bouncing about, cutting wood, picking carrots, and pumping kin. Then he gets killed to death by a fuck mother and wolf. True story. Right after, I finished, like, boring some skeletons to death by, like, rubbing a pointy stick against them. Did I mention this game of crafting? You know, the crafting, fucking crafting? Yes, it does. I tried, people. I did. I really did. 55 minutes of picking shit, cooking. I kid you not, there's an actual kitchen in this forsaken game. And inventory management, all things dear to my heart. I traveled to a city at some point. There was something about a dragon. They told me to get lost, which I did. I tapped that note button right right around when I got skullfucked by a wolf with just enough health to hobble back to my throne at the speed of smell. I'm not kidding. It took me like three damn minutes to get back, but it was a principle and I was going to do it. And not one single thing I just mentioned. Not one of those things is the biggest crime this game has committed. Nay. That honor falls to not giving me the slightest reason to do any of that nonsense. I don't like hand-holding, but this, what? this is full metal. Bloop, have fun scavenging, fucko. Have at, 100%. I mean, if you're looking for like a what the fuck am I supposed to be doing simulator, fair enough. You know, Stiffle Mime, it can deliver that. It can do it in spades. Hell, you know, it has multiplayer. You can bring along a friend to suffer in stereo. It could be brilliant. This is, this is effectively 2D Minecraft minus the plot. So, oh, combat also sucks. Hard, hard work toes, man. It, it's not even combat. It, that's what I was saying. Like rubbing, it's it's, it's laughable, like bad. I almost forgot. Everything has a nanny bar, and I mean everything. Your picks, your swords, Q-tips. Maybe they're in there. That's irritating when things break. I don't like that. So, do you think I liked it? Yes, I think no. You liked it. <laughs> would, 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 would you say this committed some niffle crimes <sighs> yeah all right well this game is how how it's a little how you say bo boring yeah so it, it does similar things to games like starbound or terraria or don't star you've you wander around gather stuff try not to lose all your health hunger etc it's kind of it the other games kind of give you some other stuff to do like exploring or platforming or whatnot uh here it's a little mindless um, you can basically just hold one of the three action buttons to do the thing until you need to turn around. Okay, so let, let's talk about that for a second, because Pedro brought it up a little bit. Um, what is the reasoning behind requiring you to pick up enemy drops with B, but everything else with A? That seems like a rel relatively pointless distinction um, that I feel should have been caught in playtesting. I'll take 200 for poor game design, Alex. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, like Ven said, the combat is hilariously bad, too. It does, like, the Don't Starve thing, where you basically just hold down the button, and your your Viking will swing away, except, 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 it will swing at the closest thing to you, um, like, which in w many cases could be a rat instead of the axe-wielding skeleton <laughs> that's trying to carve chunks off True your ass, story. providing the aforementioned skeleton ample opportunity to just do that. Um, and after, after uh, on the fifth day, I get a notification that says, the horde is coming in 10 minutes. And I've said, you know what, maybe, maybe I'll stick around and see what, what's going to happen. I, 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 I couldn't. I really couldn't. There is online multiplayer, but I really don't think this is going to save the game. Uh, at least stuff like Don't Starve gives you robots and wear beaver, moose, slumber, jacks. We, we could suffer through it. There's we could. We could we, we could make that a Patreon <laughs> goal. Like, there, there's clearly stuff to do. The, the dungeon crawling is kind of interesting where there, there there's some mapping stuff. If, if the game was more tightly focused around that, I think I'd probably be a little more... Um, a little more favorable towards it mm. but as it stands it just kind of does everything in a meh perspective or in a, in a me measure and it's not really doing it for me i'm gonna give it one chair yeah it it is very much don't starve but with a side view instead of the isometric one um 
everything feels like a chore and of course your character starts to complain i'm hungry about 30 minutes into the game so i'm hungry and, <laughs> yeah but that's you jordan uh there's something to be said about pacing it pacing in a video game it, it basically can make or break it uh and especially when it comes to atmosphere if you want to like uh, in a horror game if you want to make a horror game feel like a horror game uh you kind of need to nail the pacing down because if it's too frantic then it's not a horror game it's just doom 3 it's uh jump scares uh and if you slow it down a little too much you get all of those really crappy ones uh in the unity ghetto on steam but you know, while Vikings do live up north and there's a lot of snow going around, to describe the pacing in Niflheim as glacial would be damning it with fine praise. And fine praise it does not deserve, because it's boring. I feel like the game is deliberately wasting my time, and those are two major sins that any video game just cannot ever even think of committing, because... It's a video game. It's supposed to be entertaining. It's supposed to actually want you. To, it's supposed to elicit something in How you, you even if it's just Stardew escapism. Valley. It's the same thing. Some people actually consider that escapism. I can sort of see that because in my case, I like like Euro Truck Simulator and um, Mud Runners. I I love those games, but this one, it's just plain boring. One chair. Well, there you go. It, it makes me want to die and not go to Valhalla, just See, rot on the ground. I would at least have had a little more entertainment. I'm watching, because I'd leveled up my beating pointy stick to the point where I was one-shotting everything. Mm -hmm. And that's when it just really got, everything. when things became annoying, except for wolves. I, you know, I, I was actually <laughs> able to have kill a lot two of wolves. HP. Yeah, yeah, isn't that right? You're just like tapping the skeletons, just shattering them. You get to the wolf, wolf's like, fuck you, you're dead. And then you uh, so so my, my, my strategy for dealing with the wolves was just like, fill them up with arrows. And then once they had like no health left, just smash them to death with the iron sword. Well, that um, once I realized how to use the shield. I was like, Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it, it does a little damage reduction, then you get it. Uh, it's it's yeah, not fun. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 There's it really a lot isn't. not to like, man. All right. Mm -hmm. Coming up next, I get to remind Ven to cut the music on, and then we get in some hate mail. Womp womp. And that was a big show. It yep. was certainly a bit bigger than uh, last week's. But hey, chances are, if with a show that big, probably have some ammunition to uh, load that particular gun of choice of yours and head on over to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and fire away at us. Basically, just let us know exactly how wrong we were and in what bits exactly and uh, point on the doll exactly where we touched you. I, so. I don't know. What, what, what you described basically in my mind said, go to LinuxGameCast.com and then shoot your monitor. <laughs> you can do that if you'd like. Little column A, little column B. We suggest that you have two monitors before visiting LinuxGameCast.com, preferably an older mobile device. Sacrifice it for us. Yes. <laughs> Sacrificial lamps. Blood. Blood. Dude. All right. So was it last week? We, was that the license thing with Steam last week? I believe the week before? so. It, 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 it's hard to tell. The yeah. things tend to blend together, don't <laughs> it they? It just blurs together. But we yeah, were talking about um, Space France. They were throwing down a thing. They're like, yo, man, you got to let people transfer that license that you get from us when you, air quotes, buy a game from Steam. And we weren't necessarily against it or for it, were we? Was like, we, yeah, we, 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 were, we were more hung up on the logistics of how that would actually be done. Right. It's like, are they just going to completely block yeah. out France? So, 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 so <laughs> me, me, Mele says, in regards to the Steam, transfer of license should not be a big deal for Steam. I would rather buy a game from someone on Steam for cheap rather than risky G2A. Um, and... It's kind of missing the forest for the trees there, uh, because G2A has an entirely different issue. But yeah, like, maybe maybe a secondary market, because it would it would enable Valve to continue to take a cut, which would probably be good for their business analyst folks. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know, man. Because France is, like, doing that. To, I think they would go 
ballistic if Steam's like, yes, it will we'll charge you to transfer. Like, no. I'm pretty sure uh, they wouldn't be opposed to like the marketplace already works mm -hmm. because everyone seems to be fine with trading cards and the um, CSGO skins and whatever else. Everyone seems to be fine with how the Steam marketplace works. So yeah, selling a game and then Valve taking like 10% of each transaction. Okay. This... <sighs> Actually, I thought about this ahead of time. Do you... Would it be like open, like you just name any price that you want, or would Valve have a set price of like you can... So... So here, you could here, probably here, here, set any price that you want. I guess here, the market here, here, would dictate how much it would actually be could, worth. Okay, so so here's here's a thought. Uh, if you're if you're gonna be leveraging like the the um, Steam trading infrastructure, then you would need effectively some way to internally value the games so that you could ensure that when trades go through, it's either, it would either be purely ad hoc, or you can say like, well, my copy of Vendetta: Curse of the Raven's Cry is worth like a Dark Souls, and and uh, and like that's a, already how that works Niflheim. with oh with the current system. <laughs> Lads, we didn't think about the other way. What about games that I know we all have collectible games that are no longer available for purchase on Steam. Earth 2049 or some right? shit. Yeah. And shit like that. And yes, those could probably be worth an extra penny, but that's the whole skins argument. It's like, why is a knife skin on Counter-Strike Global Offensive worth a thousand bucks? It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not, but it's selling for that and people are buying it for that. Well, 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 so, welcome, welcome to the mm. realm of fiat currency where things are just what people agree they're worth do, do you think Valve and, would like suffer like the g2a thing because the biggest issue with the g2a i mean it really hits indie developers hard is wow i, I have a motorcycle <laughs> gang dude <laughs> i bet that was loud as fuck outside um all right back to point um neighborhoods awake was you know stolen you know credit cards and they'll buy a gang and they, they won't pay attention they end up getting chargebacks later on they're like ah now i can't keep track of what's what i would rather like just do that directly through steam like if i get how many like we were talking about how many hundreds of games do we have that just aren't played it's like eh, i personally would never go through the trouble of it but if you get like two or three bucks for it yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the 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 other interesting thing would be like, well, what if it's like a refund alternative where instead of like if you're within like the under two hours, under two weeks window, you can like sell it to someone else for some kind of reduced cost. I don't know. Like it's an, it's a that's the whole thing about it. It's in a, it's a massive logistical problem that some court is trying to impose on Valve without really thinking about the specifics of it. They just know that thing bad. Don't do mm -hmm. thing. This is true, and we were even talking about, like, what if they did the same thing? Because in Australia, we got to thank all of our brothers and sisters in Space Australia for refunds, because Valve's like, fuck, if we got to do it here, let's just do it everywhere. Yeah, yeah because nah. the, if Australia is doing it, chances are other people are going to start wanting to sue us right. to do the same, so well, let's just get ahead of the of game that, there. Right. Yeah. Which, which, which may ultimately be a moot point if the appeal goes through and succeeds. So... <sighs> Okay. And it, there's already history of that. Germany ruled in favor of Valve on this very same issue. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> indeed. So, uh, next, Mo uh, Monster Cameron, you Earl, know, you love him. He shows up sometimes, dude. He, he writes does. Uh, AMD. He, he's throwing the, he's throwing some shade on Pedro. He writes, Pedro, Pedro bought an AMD card. I'll admit, I haven't watched LGC in months, but I just so happen to know. Play by play, anything that Pedro does that's AMD related, completely unrelated. Mm -hmm. um, Stalker. <laughs> but, you know, I haven't watched the show in months, guys. But how <laughs> to how boring gaming is, but this is unprecedented. I have one to which Pedro's like old AMD laptop like laughs. <laughs> La La it's laughs like, yeah, in FGLRX. I started, I started my uh, journey. You in were Linux. Our AMD test bed for years. Yeah. <laughs> I started my journey in Linux with an ATI X7, uh, X700, and then I got the calculator that I started uh, to do the show in, which had uh, an ATI Mobility Radeon 5650 HD. So, yes, Cameron, I know exactly how bad AMD cards Pedro, were why are you on wasting Linux your breath? He doesn't time. watch the show. Yes, clearly. Because he, uh, he just but, likes to talk. Yeah. 
right now, the RX 570, it works pretty well. And Jordan has uh, an RX 580, and that works pretty well, too. I, so. I, I also, I also yeah. have a Vega 11, that were, or a Vega 10 that works very mm -hmm. well. Yeah, I have a Vega 11 uh, on the 2400G that works very well, too. <laughs> the, the, the state of AMD graphics under Linux continually improves. And, and that's I, nice I yep. absolutely have an open PO box for anybody if you're throwing out, you know, Vega 7. I'll take one of those. But outside of that, we need HBM to bounce out of here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So, you know what? That's, that's not the right thing, man. There we go. Cue the music. Take three. <laughs> <laughs> you can always find us around 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Come put us in your face organs. It's going to be sexy. But if you are a patron, an hour before that, we do the pre-pre-super shows. It's terrifying. It's our little pre-production meeting if you want to get on that nonsense. And our new unlocked thing for executive producers, the video component, so you can watch us live. But after the fact, that'll be up for everyone. Um, scream in my face, at Vin Stone on Twitter, or I'm just at Vin at mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Jordan Smung. You can find me showing off pictures of my butt on Twitter. No, I'm not, I'm not one of those people. But you can still Bounce. follow me at The Burning Fool on Twitter. How much, or do, how, how, how much for animated GIF is you twerking in short shorts? Um, hundred bucks. All right. I'm Three. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure if you did post some... Um, but pictures on Twitter, you'd get a few more followers. I am Pedro Mateus. Good luck finding any pictures of me on the internet. Well, there's a couple, but that's we, about we, it. we got some nice cross shots of you, so there, that's the thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Vent can turn that into a gif later. <laughs> we got to thank lovely people. Name and lights, name and credits. Let's roll them. All right. Look, look at all these. It's a collapse wave. Oh, someone's been watching physics documentaries. Maybe. All right, well, we, we got our executive producers. We got to thank, like, Empty and Haplo and Mac Geek and all the Patience, other people. Patience, old Skywalker. No. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I have to disappear into nothing. They're like unicorns. Arthur and, or uh, Mr. Foxdog, who also dis disapparated. Empty just appears out of nowhere and buys you alcohol. Oh, yes. oh, Atomic Oops. is always there. Mike G is always there. And uh, Brammer. Brammer. <laughs> Mm. I look at look at all those lovely regular producers Rams like and Jupiter Wata, Broadcasting. Steven, don't forget Ranger. Igor, man. Igor's a pimp. Is it Igor or Igor? Mm -hmm. I, I'm it's never Igor sure. Igor for me, baby. Always Igor in my heart, along with Max Yabo Koi K, Zoe Jack, Colsta, Nicole Wintersell, Shervik Vonzo, two thousand, Ulrich, Linux Nuru, Adrian, no longer in Tanzania. <laughs> and we got the people on Frank's fuckwall like Mike G and yes. Maddie and Truggy and Aldius and Art Theron and Frank. Bradley, Jill, Steve, and Strider and Dan W and Erod and John and Murad and Clunka and Matt the Admiral Jit and some other guy and then <laughs> Mag and Frank. Ryan and Jay and Jay Rulo, <laughs> Jellybean <laughs> and Haplo. Uh, <sighs> also special mention to Chris B for the AT2020. Thank you. <laughs> and everybody on Twitch, uh, Mike Tehan, I've heard of that guy. He did a sub thing, and that was kind of sexy. That's what we learned this yes. evening. My, Mike subs, Tehan is a sub. Subs are no longer just a sandwich. Dynafire for one. Bye. Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>